What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Blacktail. You may recall that we took a look at a very, very brief sort of, I guess, uh, demo of this game about a year, year and a half ago. Well, the game is coming out very, very soon, and so the developers, having liked the last time I checked out the game, decided to send over the beta build of the release. And so here we are. Uh, there are creepy mushrooms with raggedy teeth talking to me. Uh, they've told me that I need to go slay a dragon. Uh, this is a game that seems to be pretty heavily focused on kind of like Slavic lore and Baba Yaga and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's got RPG elements, it's got open world elements, it's got adventure elements, it's got upgrades and alchemy and crafting and hunting and all kinds of things. So anyways, we're going to spend about 30 minutes with the game today and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. So let's be on our way. The link to the game is down below along with the associated links to my Twitch and my Discord in case you wanted to hang out. But for now, let's see if we can figure out a way to get rid of this dragon. If we get rid of the dragon, the reason I'm here is that I need to get across that bridge, but the bridge is broken, and of course, no video game antagonist in the history of the world ever knows how to swim. It's just one of those arts that, like, I really feel like if I was going to do a class on, like, Heroing 101, I would make every single hero learn how to swim, like, first and foremost. Because, man, the amount of games that just have instant deaths when you go into water, or, like, water is this terrible, impassable titan. What is that? Oh, it's fish. Okay, so apparently there's also fishing, because no video game is ever complete without fishing. I don't know what those things are. They're like little taffy goo balls. They hurt you if you touch them. But if you dash across them, they drop, like, a little crystal that I can use to make arrows. This is the crafting menu right here. All I can make right now are arrows and, I think, antidotes for poison. Although I don't exactly know how to use the antidote once I've actually got it, but I figure I'll figure that out when the moment comes. This right here is a save point. You've got to have a red flower, and if you put it inside the little grave, it'll save your game for you. Uh, our character does have kind of like an internal monologue, and thus far it's not readily apparent whether or not my character is nuts or whether my character is actually... What is that thing? Get out of here. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, didn't like that. I don't know if I killed it or if it took itself out, but you know. Uh, let's carry on to the right over here and just see. What is that thing? It's probably not friendly, right? Is it dead? Can I, like, loot it? Is it going to come back? Oh, God. Okay, there's, like, little gremlin guys. Yeah, they're throwing spears at me. I missed that one. Let me sprint off this way real quick. I don't know what those are, if they're, like, goblins or, like, what they're supposed to be. But they are hostile, and one of them just stabbed me in the face, so... Oh, I'm all out of arrows. Beautiful. Oh, wow, there's, like, explosives and things everywhere. Okay, I shouldn't have come here. This was a mistake. Everything I've ever done in my life is a mistake. All right, let me make some more arrows real quick, because that did not seem to work out. I don't know if... Like that owl. Did it drop anything when I took it down? Okay, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Apparently it can glitch through walls. Oh, but it dropped like a, what is that, like a honeycomb thing? Nice. Uh, so the reason we're picking up things off the ground is that every now and again we're going to be presented an opportunity to go to Baba Yaga's hut. And when you go to Baba Yaga's hut, uh, you can buy upgrades depending on, like, the alchemical ingredients that you currently have on your person. Uh, so you can increase your health meter, which is in the bottom left. You can increase your force meter, which is like that magic spell thing that I just did where I sent like a shockwave forward. Uh, you can get new types of crafting materials and arrows and things of that nature. What's going on up here? What is this thing? Something's glowing up here. Oh, it's another save point. Oh, a kitty. A creepy kitty, but a kitty nonetheless. The game does seem to be focused on like choices and choices having like long-term ramifications. I haven't seen any of those consequences of any of my actions yet, which, like, to me, is perfect. Like, I think a world in which I face no consequences for any of the decisions I make is actually, like, an optimal world. Wow, look at that scenescape they've put in front of you right there. Looks great. Uh, what is this right here? Can I open it? Oh, I got, like, a... A tooth. You can brew an interesting stew out of it back at the hut. And finally become a hero in your own story. <laughs> Alright, well apparently I picked up a tooth and a bunch of assorted flowers. 
Those aren't objects that I personally would leave right next to each other. I feel like there's a real chance for kind of like runoff and spoilage if I do that. But still, you know, you got teeth, you need to store them, you gotta put them somewhere. <coughs> Oi, miss. Miss, uh, moment of your time. Oh, uh, good day to you, Mr. Mr. Lava. Not a very good day to be alive, I gotta say. All underworlds are rage. The elders protesting. Lost souls ridden around. The main tunnels blocked by those awful roots. Gotta dig the terrace. It's got me all twisted. Tell me, miss. Did I go up or did I go down? Uh, since you can see the sky, I'm gonna say pretty clearly you went up, my little dude. I'm gonna help him? I, I don't know, dude. He looks so small and miserable, and he's like a little bit oily. I feel like life has been unkind in the way that it has chosen to manifest the larva into the world. Not an attractive creature, so I'm gonna throw him a solid. Up to get here, Mr. Lava. Oh, yes. That's so. Thank you, miss. I should get back to work. The monsters aren't going to make themselves, are they? Wait. I'm gonna need that... I'm gonna need you to, like, repeat that sentence for me. Why are we milking demons? What is this thing over here? Is it bad? Hurry, Lord of Thunder. May your light show me the way. Keep me free as the birds in your sky. Okay, I don't know exactly what that did for me. But this game is very, very cryptic. That's what I've noticed in playing through, like, the first 30 minutes or so, is that this is an odd game that seems to really be leaning into kind of like show don't tell. I think for some people that's gonna be like a little bit frustrating, like what's going on here? But like for me, I actually like a little bit of mystery uh, when it comes to the way like a world is revealed to me. Oh look dude, there's like a little echidna down here. I can eat him or I can help him get the fruit. This game does have a morality system in case you were wondering if you do good things, like something might happen. And if you do bad things, then bad things might happen. Uh, the voice in my head seems to be pretty well aligned with doing bad things about as frequently as possible. I, I don't think the voice in my head is a very nice person. But then again, having lived my own life, that seems fairly accurate. I don't know, that voice in your head, man, it can get a little bit rowdy. I've always felt like that's the difference between like a good person and like a bad person. Is that like the bad person lets that like sinister like asshole voice in their head just like went out and they're like, yeah, dude, I'm just going to go with what he says to do. And then like your ability to resist that really determines whether or not like on a deep subconscious level you might be an okay person. Now let's see here. And like the more you work, you got to work on it too. It's not easy. I missed. I got to lead him a little bit. Okay, that one's down. Cancel that arrow out. Did that one drop anything? Oh. I sense that things are happening. Uh, there is a beehive up there. This might be a really, really bad idea. You're such a monster. I'm a monster? What if I just like the taste of delicious honey, dude? Honey was worth its weight in gold during this time period. People used to, like, mess with each other for honey, dude. They used to, like, rob each other for honey. Honey's the good stuff in the pre-sugar world. Apparently, I got my arrow back. I don't necessarily know what I got out of the honeycomb right there. Oh, apparently, I could put a flower inside the little pot. Okay, I don't know what that did, but sure. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, make a wish upon a shooting star. That's not my character. That's the voice in my head. My character is the demure one that seems very lacking in self-confidence. Uh, let's see. There is a little trail that goes back this way. Do I have a map? I do indeed have a map, and what a map it is. That's a really, really good-looking map right there. Okay, there be dragons. I have to find the knight. It says he's kind of like in the westward direction. So I gotta go that way. Maybe this loops around. Let's go this way and we'll kind of like see where that leads us. For the moment, the only weapon that I really have is my bow. We do have a chest down here that I seem to have found. Let's grab it. Another tooth. Lots of lots of teeth and boxes around here. Uh-oh. Oh, dude, right between his legs. Come on. Nope, you're not gonna stab me, dude. You're not gonna stab me. That's right. Go to sleep. Weird little skull munchkin dude. Get on out of here. 
Uh, how many arrows do I have left? I got enough arrows left. We'll be all right. I need some stronger arrows, though, too. There's another fishing spot down there. But yeah, everything about this game seems to be rendered and modeled and animated reasonably well. Like, it's a good-looking game. I still haven't gotten used to shooting yet because I didn't fiddle with the sensitivity. I've been playing too many first-person shooters in my free time, and I've got my sensitivity, like, highly tuned on all my other games. And this one, I just didn't have time to fiddle with it. So I'm going to be whiffing a lot of shots here today just due to that fact. I'm, like, overcompensating, and I can feel myself doing it. Yeah, maybe you just don't feel like dealing with you right now. I will take my arrow back, though. This right here, I think I can banish these with a the magic spell. Yeah, I can. I can disintegrate them. So there we go. We've banished it. Here's something flapping around. Skull on a stick. Okay. Do I want to go... I mean, let's keep going down into the spooky rock-clad valley. Like, why go to the place that's comforting and looks like, you know, Elwyn Forest or whatever, that's, like, highly saturated and beautiful and relaxing and seems like the kind of place you could build a settlement? Let's just... Let's go into the, the, the terrifying grotto. That seems like a great idea. Uh, what is... A stick bug? Taking its life for my own needs. Are you sure about that? Apparently, it's evil for me to take a stick bug. Okay, little stick bug. You live another day. Because I'm being nice on this playthrough. Well, something just made a noise over here like a horse. Oh. Well, I don't know what you are, but your eyes are glowing. Are you benevolent, or are you going to try to hurt me, dude? The one thing I know about Slavic folklore... A peasant? Have you lost your way to the village, serf? Oh, what a gallant steed you are. Bovi Boko sent me to help you with that honey case. Huh! He sent you? <sighs> well then, it seems the time has come to earn your valor, squire. We need to stop that filthy dragon from gorging on our people. We'll serve it some proper justice instead. Squire, huh? <clears throat> How do you propose we proceed, my lord? I have designed a special piece of siege machinery. A work of wonder. We will push it into the dragon's lair, where it shall bestow God's will upon the beast. The problem is we're still missing black powder. I need someone small and sneaky for the job. <sighs> Something tells me this is where I step in. Correct. You'll need to retrieve it from a bloody outlaw's lair. Rebel gods curse his name. Slippery Jack's friend? Why won't you go, sir? Well, uh... Um... <laughs> Good one. Rebel is one of the cursed, of course. And I am a grand. Without further ado, shall we free the land of the dragon's reign? I mean, yeah, sure, why not? Let's get started. You know, I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm basically using, like, a slingshot that fires sticks, but what could possibly go wrong? I think I'm good to go. Of, uh, I, I mean... I shall not wait any longer to obtain the most wondrous artifact from the Defiler's Domain. <sighs> Splendid! Retrieve the powder! When you're done, you'll find me at my... Anything wrong? Can you hear it? The enemy is approaching! Stand and fight for your life, Squire! <sighs> there are too many of them! This thing stuck on my hand. You've and... almost figured it out. That fancy gauntlet of yours. Learn, act, repeat. One day you'll get the most out of it. I, I, I don't think I can repeat. The cauldron has all the answers. Okay. Apparently, I now have the witch apprentice skill recipe. 
and I can brew it by the cauldron in the hut. Okay, cool. Okay. I don't know how I get back to the hut just yet. Haven't really derived that. But what is this thing right here? Is it like a giant roly-poly? As I was saying, Slavic folklore, you can never tell whether or not something is benevolent or whether or not it's trying to eat your face. That seems to be the hallmark of things like Rizolkas and, you know, Leshies and all those kind of... Oh, dude. It's gonna be like that, huh? All right, fair enough. Down you go. And then, I don't know if that was my arrow I just looted back, but sometimes they drop their eyeballs. Uh, let's go... Maybe we'll go back to the comforting valley so that I can feel better about my life decisions and no longer be terrified that I'm going to be eaten by large lizards. Hello, boys. How are we doing? Good and dead? I can appreciate that. I can respect it. There does seem to be a lot of treasure and, like, things laying around. Oh. Oh. Oh no, dude. I ran out of arrows. I'm always out of arrows. But the cool thing about running out of arrows in this game is that your bow becomes a guitar. And you can play like some, some wild mariachi music, man. You can get down and festive. Now, let's continue to... So like, did it move something around here? It just says get out of the canyon. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, I can't dash through these guys? Okay. All the other enemies I've messed around with so far, I've been able to, like, dash through. And so I figured I'd try to, like, dash and shove my way through them, but it didn't work out that way. Health getting kind of low. Not feeling so great. Uh, we can do a power shot and then F. Okay, let's let's try that out. That sounds cool. Now, think it's special. Boost your shot with the gauntlet's energy. I mean, they weren't lying. That was actually pretty special. My arrow turned into, like, a shotgun arrow. We're getting somewhere. What was it the mushroom wanted? There we go. I'm trying to drop those things. Yay, I'm out of arrows. Is that an ant? What is that? <laughs> Ahem. Hmm. Hmm. Tremble before our might, puny mortal. Soon, the rivers will flow with the blood of all who dare to oppose the eternal empire of ants. I... I beg your mercy, my queen empress. Enough. Show me the way to the human settlement, so I can lead my merciless army and pour my wrath upon them. Yeah, sure. I feel like aiding the ants and the annihilation of the human race is not going to have any consequences whatsoever. Lead your armies past the lake, my queen. May your conquest be swift. Soon, all will know the true meaning of horror. <laughs> this game is so weird. Like, none of this stuff has had any consequence or anything yet, but I'm interested in seeing how it actually affects the gameplay. Uh, you can break these pots by dashing through them. Uh, I have really, really bad health right now, though. We should probably figure out a way to heal. Yeah, and maybe not get hit in the face with a spear. Yeah, you felt that one whistle by your face, didn't you? Hit your friend in the back. It was kind of accidental. I was trying to hit you, but, like, killing your friend's just as good. Uh, what do we have going on over here? Some more grassy areas. A few more bugs. With a bang. See if I can snipe them from back here and take care of business that way. What's up with the honeycombs? The honeycombs don't actually seem to go into my inventory. Oh, that plant right there gave me health back. Nice. Okay, so I just got to find more of those little... What is this thing? Take that, you bunch of crooks. Ant invasion called off. At least around here. Oh, it's like a little ant pillar so that they can find their way around and invade the realm of man. Well, see, now I've betrayed the pact, though. And so now all of the forces of the bug planet are going to be arrayed against me. Like, I was trying to side with Clendathu, and now 
Now look what happened. I always wanted to have my own bug horde to do my own personal Kerrigan thing. Uh, there's a pretty gnarly tree over there. So is the cauldron marked on the map anywhere, or do I just have to, like, manually walk back over here? I think I might actually have to manually walk back to the hut each time that I want to use it. How big is the world map? Honestly, it looks fairly sizable if all of that space is actually capitalized on. Sort of hard to say, though. So there's, like, a well over there. This is where I started out down here. Uh, so we just kind of need to go east. What is that? Favorite? A shrine, a shrine. Okay, so it's telling me where the save points and things are at. Gotcha. Uh, let's keep going east, and I'm going to show you Baba Yaga's tree so that I can show you what the level up mechanic looks like. What is that thing? I don't know, dude. It's next to a save point and a campfire. There's a cooking mini game in this. You can hunt and you can cook the things that you hunt in order to get your health back. Uh, but anyways, what it, what are you? Apparently, it's been added to the Wildlife Journal, but I, I don't know. It gave me a bunch of materials or something. It's like an animated frog bag, as one would tend to find out in the middle of nowhere. Frog bag. Who doesn't love frog bag? Okay, so welcome back to Baba Yaga's Hut. Or, welcome for the first time if you've never been here before. If you saw the last video, this is going to be the return to a friend. But if you never saw the last video, then this is all new to you. This is the cauldron. Uh, this is where we level up inside of Baba Yaga's super creepy hut. Uh, upstairs, we have a statue that is missing a face and also a lower half of its body. Right here, we have a grimoire that will allow us to learn about the wildlife and the things that exist in the world. Uh, everything from toad bags to bobbocks to deer. I mean, I don't even know what a bobbock is, but, like, sometimes you kill a bobbock and they'll give you, like, a a thing called, like, a shellic, which is a crafting material. But anyways, this is the level-up system. So, inside of here, everything has a cost. So, you can buy these various skills if you want, but it looks like we need more things things for most of these. So I need 50 feathers in order to become a Fletcher. What does Fletcher actually do? Craft two hex arrows for the price of one. Gotcha. And then what does this do right here? I need a lost page. Okay. Uh, unicorn blood. Drinking any potion gives you a little bit of health back. Uh, we can't tell what that one is. It also looks like there's going to be... So it, it looks like there are aspects... And so of the various skills that you acquire, if you have enough of, like, the aspect of the hare or, like, of the goat or, like, of the raven, it unlocks something uh, that diversifies your playstyle. We've also got, like, the morality wheel over here. Wheel of morality. Turn, turn, turn. Uh, but anyways, it'll tell you the deeds that you've done for all the various factions. Apparently, I've activated good which means that I get more resources from the environment or something. And then if you go to the left and you embrace the aspects of darkness, then obviously you're probably going to side with Rebel instead of having him be hunted by night and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there do seem to be, like, multiple paths here that you can walk down. Can I just go north into whatever that creepy air? Oh, no, there's a big door over there. I don't think the creepy door is going to let me through. Let me resume my adventure then. We shall continue. To slay our enemies with many pointy sticks. I actually went and found like one flower, so I think we can buy an upgrade here. A uh, sharpshooter. There we go. It used up all my flowers, but apparently I now draw my bow significantly faster, which actually feels pretty good to me because uh, my bow draw was feeling kind of clunky. Uh, they are not wrong about that. That is a much faster draw. Probably cut it down by, like, half. Good. I love it when a skill delivers on its promise. Like, you ever played a game and it's, like, increases your attack speed significantly, and then you, like, dig into the guts of the game and it gave you, like, a 4% attack speed increase, and you're just like, man, that's not significant. Come on, dude. 15%, 20% is significant. I'm going to shoot that thing out of the tree. Did he drop a did he drop a shellic? Nice, dude. I need more shellics. 
awaiting their chance. We've all been there. Have we? I feel like you're just speaking in esotericisms at this point that just make me feel like I have no idea what's going on. It looks like it wants me to go to the village. That's what we've got marked as our objective. Uh, so let's go ahead and head on over to the village. At this point, I'm not completely sure if those shrines are actually saving my game or not. I don't know. Um, they're doing something. Like, the game clearly wants me to interact with them and give them flowers. Maybe it's just a nice thing to do. Maybe statues in the woods, made out of hasty brambles, uh, have not been getting the respect and the adoration they feel they deserve. Maybe we're making up for a deficit right now. Oh, dude, another frog bag. All right. Hit me with that frog loot, baby. Kitty? Oh. Oh, the kitty is a teleporter. Okay, yeah. Of all the things I support in life, my easy and humble access to a kitty porter sounds like one of the best ideas ever. Uh, the world is very stylized. Everything is thrown together in a very tremendously pleasing aesthetic way in this game. So far, the voice acting has been hit or miss. I feel like some of the voice actors are doing a much better job than others who are over-delivering uh, lines and whatnot. But for the most part, it's serviceable. I haven't had a huge amount of issues with most of the voice acting so far. Uh, but the world design and everything is just absolutely gorgeous. Like, look at the place. It positively explodes into your eye. It's just such a good-looking game. Like, everything from the angles and, and, like, the architecture of things meant to look like rib cages, but then again, they're actually, like, boiled-out, bubbled-out lava snakes. Like, it's just kind of a, a very, very cool art style. I get the feeling the artist that worked on this game is a very, very unique person. Well, I got another Shellic, and Shellics are one of those things that I never have enough of. So, what's inside the cave? Oh, my objective is inside the cave? Aw, oh, dude, is there a dragon in here, dude? Caves seem like the kind of place where dragons hang out. Oh, it's just a mushroom, dude. I'm pretty sure I can fight a mushroom. Like, I'm not that gangster, but I, I feel like I'm gangster enough to where my college holds no sway over me. Oh, he's got an axe sticking out of the side of his head, though, with a dead guy dangling from it. I'll be damned. Look who's there. It's the little kitty goat sent by the stiff neck gnat to rob me of the explosives. I'm not all warmed up after the nap, but it's still gonna be enough for you. <laughs> Down against your petty rules. Okay. Ow! Okay, yeah, that was supremely painful and I hated it. Okay. Uh, I saw a healing thing over here. Yeah, there's a berry bush over here. I'm gonna eat that real quick since I'm in one-shot territory. And his little zombie's running around doing whatever it does. Oh boy, I need more arrows. There we go, arrows, arrows good to go. Uh, yeah, I'd rather not get whirlwind. Oh no, okay. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Let's get it. Let's get it. Come on. Oh, that last one didn't count. Where you at? Let's get it. Oh, I... Luckily, it looks like save points are pretty readily available because it just popped me right back outside the cave and it doesn't seem like there was really any negative effect. Yeah, let's take a let, let, let's take another little swipe at this guy. Now that I'm aware of his attack patterns and how he likes to move and operate. Uh, I'm just gonna see maybe I can get some arrows off on oh nice we stunned him. There we go. His health is going down a lot quicker this time because he doesn't have the jump on me. 
Also because I'm aware of his shenanigans. Ow. Okay. Apparently I'm very, very slowed. I'm just gonna grab that real fast. Need more arrows. Ow, that's an axe to the side of my face. His zombie was right behind me. I feel like I knew that information. But I whiffed it. Oh, nice, he's dead. Hell yeah. There it is. What is that thing right there? Oh, he gets converted down into like a, a kickable mushroom. You aren't worth my spit. I mean, you're all tiny and stuff now, dude. You better relax before I put you in some sketty sauce, dude. Put you in some sketty sauce or spread you over the top of my steak. You better hope I'm feeling merciful. None can stand against me. All right, let's get our secret treasure over here. See me now. Um, is someone there? <gasps> the mushroom's blood is still warm as the girl in a peculiar mask leaves his lair. Isn't that a lovely scene? Well, I guess I'm not the only peculiar looking person around. Hi, what big eyes you have. All the better to see you with. See who you are. See what you did. Look, I can explain. Never do that. Not in front of me. Whispers can be extremely loud if you know where to listen. Don't mind the poor soul here. He will grow back anyway. That is how mushrooms are. Coming here was a dead end, though. You can deliver the package later. But at the end of the day, that's not what gets you past the bridge. I don't quite... Your fellow mushrooms and I made a deal to get rid of the, the dragon. The dragon is just an idea. A facade to the real problems of the forest. Following the trail of honey would be the first step towards dealing with them without making so much unnecessary noise. Oh, I get it. The operation goes undercover. So, where does this trail start, exactly? On the offering site, under the mill, in front of the so-called Dragon's Den. Take this pot of honey, plant a lure, take cover, and see who shows up. I'm sure the result may surprise us. You may want to seek me out after you're done there. Some princess's beauty sleep may be just about to end. Hmm. Let us proceed with the investigation then, Mr... I'm a man of shadows. Make sure to never turn your back on them, masked girl. What an odd, strange game. But I have an appreciation for that, because, like, a lot of the stuff I get sent is, like, a never-ending list of, like, platformers, vampire survivors-style games, uh, RPGs that want to be like Baldur's Gate, you know, like, you get a lot of things that are references to previous games that have very, very similar mechanics, whereas this game is odd and weird and kind of stands on its own so far. Uh, I do find that sometimes, like, the movement in combat or maybe the shooting doesn't quite feel as intuitive to me, but part of that is because I think I haven't messed with my sensitivity, and also I don't have a lot of upgrades or anything yet, and so I can't really speak on whether or not that's going to get better. I will say that drawing my bow feels a lot better right now. Oh, I have to hit him on the belly side? Gotcha. Okay. So he's, like, armored on the top. But yeah, this is Blacktail, a preview thereof. Uh, so far, a game that I'm actually quite interested in from the hour or so that I've played of it. Uh, I'm interested to see how deep the systems go, because it keeps introducing them, but I, I get the feeling you're going to have to play a whole lot uh, before you start to see the extent to which uh, things like the morality system matter, for example, or, you know, the decisions that you're making in the conflicts between the characters start to matter. Uh, but for right now... I don't have too many things to complain about. Like, some of the clunkiness of the combat is kind of like going away as I get upgrades, so I think that may be kind of intended. And so, my name is Splattercat. Hopefully this preview made you aware of the game, helped you see some gameplay and decide if it's the kind of thing for you. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. 
and I appreciate you taking the time to come and hang out with me. Uh, if you wanted to see what the cooking systems and some of the other subsystems look like at the beginning of the game, I do have another video on this game that I recorded about a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, that you can check out that'll show you the intro to how we kind of got where we are right now. But I didn't want to pick up and do a second video on the same game from the exact same spot that we were already in. That just kind of felt like a cop-out doing the same thing twice and then just kind of shoveling it out to you here on the internet. And so I figured we'd go a little bit further in this time and check out stuff that you maybe haven't seen from Blacktail. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for being here, and that's all I got. Bye, folks.